Now let's listen to a couple acoustic guitar recordings. SE Electronics were kind enough to send me a matched pair of SE7 microphones, so of course I made some stereo acoustic guitar recordings with those as well. Okay, so this is... It's kind of OR, ORTF, not, it's not dead on. That sounds creepy. <laughs> I also recorded a voiceover track while hand holding the 603S and SE7. Okay, this is the voiceover test and the previous one, the levels were too quiet. Okay, this is the voiceover test and the previous one, the levels were too quiet. So on this one, I'm going to just uh, keep talking above the microphone so that there's no popped peas, or at least I'm trying to prevent that from happening. So on this one, I'm going to just uh, keep talking above the microphone so that there's no popped peas, or at least I'm trying to prevent that from happening. For gits and shiggles, I even recorded a couple harmonicas. Here's a test that microphone manufacturers hate for guys like me to record, but I love it because it really shows the true quality of a microphone. That is the keys jangle test. Do either of these microphones sound like crumpled up aluminum foil? Now here's an interesting little shootout. The Shure SM57 versus the SE7 
on a close mic snare drum. Here's one final test. It is a pink noise streaming into the SE7 with the 20 decibel attenuation pad going in. And that is to see how good the attenuation pad's quality is. And I use Blue Cat Audio's Freak Analyst Multi to do the comparison. Does the SC7 sound as good as my 603S? No, and I really didn't expect it to considering the $200 price difference. However, with a little bit of EQ and a little bit of noise reduction, the differences can be made up to a degree. That's not to say that the SE7 is a noisy microphone, not at all, but compared to the 603S, it is less so. The SE7 features an 80 Hz high pass filter at 6 decibels per octave and a 20 decibels gain attenuation pad. It can handle up to 156 decibels of sound pressure level with the pad switched on, which is very impressive. Those switches require use of a paper clip or thumbtack so that they aren't accidentally turned on or off. That's a good thing. It has low self noise and doesn't sound very harsh compared to other sub $100 Chinese microphones. The SE7 also comes packed with a metal 5 8 of an inch thread adapter, stand clip, windscreen, SE logo stickers, and even a small printed user manual. Like the other SE Electronics microphones that I've tried out, it looks classy and it doesn't feel cheap. It has some weight to it. The front grill is solid metal construction and protects the microphone diaphragm. As far as the microphone body exterior itself, it is solid metal. It could probably take a lot of drumstick wax and probably if it falls off a mic stand, it probably won't you know, just die on you. I wouldn't recommend slamming it on a stage, but the good thing is if it does break or somebody steals it, you're out $100, not $300 or more. Here's the beautiful thing. It comes with a two years transferable limited manufacturer's warranty. And if you register the product with SE, they extend it to three years. In my opinion, the SE7 sounded really good on everything that I tested it out on. It should also sound good on piano, fiddle, um, clean electric guitar amps, and maybe even close tom drum microphones. I didn't try it on that, I should have, but based on what I heard from using it on, as an overhead, it probably would sound okay. Although I would be concerned about the microphone spill and any phasing issues that come along with that. If you have an extra $150 to spend or $300 for the match pair, then the Bigger Brother SE8 is what I would recommend checking out. The main differences I'll show on screen right now. All right, so here's the negatives. The SE7 is very susceptible to plosives or any wind. So if you're gonna record vocals with it, you definitely wanna put the windscreen on. You definitely wanna put the 80 Hertz high pass filter on and definitely put a pop filter 
ideally something like a Stedman Pro Screen XL in front of it, but I would actually recommend um, doing what they do on movies and you boom it over the people's head and you just have them sing straight ahead, and, you know, don't have them look up, just sing straight ahead and then that'll take care of most of the wind issues. The other issue I had is that the mic clip itself is tight, but hey, at least you know the mic's not going to fall out of the thing. And then the other thing, which is, it's, it's kind of a negative, kind of not, is that the XLR connector is very tight and you should probably press down the switch before trying to attach it. Otherwise, it takes, it takes some pressure to push in. But again, this is probably a positive to most people, but for me, I'm used to microphones where the cable just goes right in, no problem. I would feel comfortable only using the SE7 to record everything with. It is the affordable desert island microphone. In other words, it's perfect if you're starting a new home studio on a budget. The SE7 is going to be the microphone that I recommend to new audio engineers that are on a budget from here on out. That is the biggest compliment I can give to a product and I gotta give it I got to give credit to SE's research and development team for making this happen at this price point. Thanks for watching this realhomerecording.com video. You can get monthly audio engineering news and exclusive videos by signing up for our newsletter. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or thumbs down and consider subscribing. Have some questions? Feel free to ask them in the comment section below. If Adam has helped you produce better quality audio, then please consider becoming a monthly patron or donate via PayPal. Bye!